Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. With the 2020 election fast approaching, there is a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. But today we thought oh. we would start with the basics in our mm -hmm. Sister Circle Civics 101. We'll cover all the bases. And here to break it down for us is our favorite political analyst, Mo Ivory. Yes. Yes. And we got time oh, today. Man. Praise oh, God. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Yes. Come on, Tom. Talk about civics. I'm yes, so happy you were able to get back like quick. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, especially when you it's know so approaching. It's yeah. So yeah, I want everyone to know this information because it can change your life. Yes. it really can, yes. and it does. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we're in parochial school and we're thinking about when we're in social studies, and you don't really pay attention to what you need to. Mm -hmm. Right. But you know, and a lot of people have a basic understanding sure. of politics and the government and how it works. But can you break it down for us? And we can start by please explaining the three branches mm -hmm. of government. We're gonna take mm -hmm. it down to mm -hmm. one. Oh, we're gonna take it to Listen. zero. People. Everyone listen, it, turn the volume up. Yes, this is um, <laughs> what you learn, you know, when uh, you go to middle school or elementary school, but a lot of people fall asleep. They don't really pay attention. So we have three branches of government. Of course, it's the legislative, the executive, and the judicial, right? So mm -hmm. the legislative branch of government makes the laws, and it's made up of our two houses of Congress. Mm -hmm. So it's the House of Representatives and the Senate. Mm -hmm. So it's important when you hear them say, well, the House is all Republican and the mm -hmm. Senate is all Republican. Well, those are the people that are going to be making the laws of our country. So that's very important. The Congress is made up of the House and the um, and the Senate. So that is the uh, legislative branch. And then, of course, there's the executive branch, and that is the president, the vice president, and his cabinet. And the president enforces and executes the laws, right? So the president, once the legislature makes a law, they pass it on to the president, he signs it, and the law becomes the law of the land, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's the judicial branch, and they are the ones that interpret the law. Mm -hmm. So it's the courts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the highest court being the Supreme Court of the United States. So the three branches of government have a thing called checks and balances, mm -hmm. right? So there's three branches. They're all in place to make sure that no one branch becomes more powerful than the other. Yeah. It's in our Constitution. It's called the separation of the powers. powers. Mm -hmm. And it is what our founders put in place to say that the judicial branch will not, you know, uh, say this is the law of the land and that's it and nothing else can happen because the legislature sure no. makes the law. What is the, okay, so when you say the legislative branch, and then you say Congress, and then you say Congress makes up the House and the Senate. Why the word Congress if you already have the word legislative branch? Well, the legislative branch is just what has been defined as one of the branches of the government. Okay. The people that serve under the legislative are branch considered are Congress. considered Congress. Okay. And in Congress, there are two branches, the United States House of Representatives and also the Senate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. get back to checks and balances, though, sure. because I don't, I don't really feel. <laughs> These days that we're living in now, the checks and balances are really being enforced. Mm -hmm. One sound you. Okay. So, yes, um, checks and balances were being put in place so that we have a true democracy, not Democrats. So when you say the word democracy, we're not talking about the Democratic Party. We're talking about the principle of democracy in America, which means that the people, people. decide what is going to happen. The three branches of government check each other. Mm -hmm. But here is the thing that most people don't understand, and I'll give you just an example for uh, of uh, checking each other. If the president, for example, mm -hmm. doesn't like something that the legislative mm -hmm. branch put into place and mm -hmm. made a law, uh -huh. he has a veto power, mm -hmm. a presidential veto power, and he can make sure that that law that the legislature put in place does not actually become law for the judicial branch to interpret, okay? Mm -hmm. So, if he decides to use the power of the presidency in executive order, mm -hmm. right, and then somebody doesn't like that executive order, which is what he will execute, they can go to the judicial branch and fight, and fight the yeah. accuracy or the enforceability of that executive order. And is that Lame indicative? In terms, we call it checking them. Checking them, <laughs> right. Is that indicative of what's going on in impeachment, the abuse yes. of executive power? Or even immigrants locking children up. If oh, he Jesus. makes an executive order that says, when these immigrant children come to our shores, they are not allowed in. And then the Democrats say, well, we're going to take that to the other branch of government, the judiciary, and fight that interpretation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When it gets to the judiciary, many of them have been appointed judges oh. by the president. Yeah. Yep. So wow. if you then get to the judiciary, who is supposed to be checking the president, but oh. they are appointed Everybody by the, the president, president then there's no him. check it's on no that. Check. So how does that happen? Many judges are elected officials. So here we go down to the 
basic thing. My vote don't count. Well, that is not true. Because if you don't vote for judges that are elected, and then they do, when you get in front of the judiciary on whatever level, state, federal, national, it's the judge that they wanted that sends your person all right, all right, right to jail. All right. So good. So good. Listen, so, trust me, we have it, more yeah. with Mo Iver when we return. <laughs> a lot yes. more. Yes. Yes. A lot more. more. Today. Okay. Okay. This is so good. <laughs> back on Sister Circle Live with political analyst Mo Ivory for our Sister Circle Civics one-on-one -on -one lesson. And when I tell this you, this is the class best class is back ever. In session. Oh my it God. Is back in session. Now let's get down to the nitty-gritty, Mo. <laughs> Let's get into the election process and how that works. The primaries, the caucuses, and political conventions. How does the election process really work? Yeah, sure. So the party is about to get started on February 3rd, mm -hmm. and the election process starts first with primaries and caucuses. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to be uh, nervous about what is a caucus. It's the same exact thing as a primary. It just means that we're picking the person from each party. The Republicans are going to pick their candidate. The Democrats are going to pick their candidate. Some states have primaries. Some states have caucuses. Ah, they're the same exact thing. thing. Okay. okay. So and they're done a little bit differently, but that's not really important. It's how they pick the person that's going to be sort of the leading person. So in Iowa, it starts on February 3rd. Mm -hmm. And then right after, so Iowa, why Iowa? Nobody knows. That's what historically has been done. It doesn't represent a, a cross-section of America. It's just the first party, right? Okay. After mm -hmm. that, the next party is New Hampshire. And then after that, the next party is Nevada. And then after that, the next party is South Carolina, mm -hmm. right? Then we're going to say, like, ooh, Elizabeth Warren is leading, or ooh, Biden is leading. Mm -hmm. or what? And it's going to give Americans an idea sort of of what's happening. Okay. That's going to go all the way through to June, That's right? Fine. And mm -hmm. Super Tuesday is March 3rd, which they call it Super Tuesday because a bunch of states have primaries on that same day. Some, mm -hmm. a couple of caucuses. So that day, March 3rd, has been picked as sort of Super Tuesday because so many states come out. Mm. But it won't all be done until June when every single state has yes. participated Got in a primary. It. All right, let's break down popular vote versus electoral college. Hmm. We saw in the last uh, election Hillary. Mm -hmm. that Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, but of course, President Trump is now President Trump through the Electoral College. May you please break that down in layman's terms. Sure. Okay. So our system is built. You do not become the president by when people go to vote. It's a system called the Electoral College, which gives 538 electors the right to put in for who becomes the president of the United States. It is a winner take all. So what does that mean? That means that in every state, a certain amount of electors are appointed in each state. So for example, California has 55, so that's huge, right? Yes. Uh, Texas has 38. New York has 29. Not every state has the same number. So right. automatically, that means certain states are going to be very important for that party to win. So you and I go vote in Georgia. I'm a Democrat, you're a Republican, and you go and vote. If the Republicans win Georgia, winner take all, meaning the percentage of the popular vote, those electoral votes go to the party that Ooh. won, okay? Yeah. So you start adding up all all the way down. You need 270 to win because there's 538, so 270 is on the winning side, down mm -hmm. the middle. And so in Georgia, if the Republicans win the popular vote at the at the polls, right, all the votes add up and they won 53 percent versus 48 percent in Georgia, all those Georgia votes go to the Republicans and they cast them for the president. Mm -hmm. When he gets to 270, he has become the president. Wow. So it is true that one state, for example, could have more people vote, yeah. but they don't have as many electors to get to that 270. Mm. So what does that mean yes. in regular basic yes. vote? So it means that it it, if you go and vote in great numbers, like for example what happened with Barack Obama twice, there's no uh, doubt that those electoral numbers from oh, your yes. state will automatically go winner take all yeah. to the the candidate that you want. It's super important. Now That's, real quick, what is a battleground and swing state? We will let you know on our Instagram page. Show, please, okay, and remember the oh, conversation oh continues on Sister Circle TV on all <laughs> social media platforms. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm, 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 I'm,